it, that's what they're trying to give us is the frame, the mind frame that we're supposed to have in the kingdom. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? I'm going to bookmark this and this is going to be the first thing I, I ever read to my son from the Bible. <laughs> <laughs> well, I swear to God. Bookmark Rondell, you are going to be, I'm going to be like, this is the story that Rondell gave to me. I wouldn't have came across this passage for what's the first thing. <laughs> Thank you, uncle. We bring some hustlers. We is not no. Alright, so you ready with me? Yeah. Alright, so it's a quick story, but it's three this chapter's got three parables or three stories that describe the kingdom, and we're in the kingdom. This is the kingdom of King James, right? Jamestown, Virginia, right? And we're reading the book well, of, of King James, right? Okay, I, I'm not there with you there, but I hear you. All right, so I'm just prefacing that that we're in the kingdom of King James. King James, King James has nothing to do with me. And I'm no, no, no. I'm just no, no. I ain't say nothing to you. I'm just saying. All right, is it not a fact that the first colony established in the Northern Americas, the English town, uh -huh. we speak in English yeah. right now because of King James. Virginia. Okay, Jamestown. And the Virginia is because they came over on the ship called the Virginia. Um, in honoring the Virgin Queen. Okay? Queen Elizabeth. The Virgin Queen. My my point is is that this is his colony. And we speak in English because of him. Okay? And he left a book for his kingdom that he authorized for his book his kingdom. And in the book is his translation. Are you saying the KJV? King James Version. Okay. That's what I'm just saying. That's the connection between King James and King James Town. Okay. All right. Now, so. When you say your state, that's right. I'm just. Uh, for, my, for, for my understanding, I want to ask a simple question. Okay. When you say all of this, right? Okay. Does it affect any narrative of the biblical story that you and I know? Well, we're going to... Yes or no. Uh, you okay, you are... That after just give me a yes or no. Okay, you said, does it affect the biblical narrative? My understanding, as, a, as an Ethiopian, ancient Christian, Eritrean, ancient Christian, Egyptian, ancient Christian, right? Does okay. it affect my knowledge and understanding of the Bible? Yes or no? And then if you say yes... Give me your answer after we finish this, and then if you say no, just carry on. All right. So you said, is it supposed to affect your narrative as a author, um, understanding. Or the, your understanding? understanding. Yeah. Well, it's supposed to give you understanding, okay. but it's not supposed to. It's it's not supposed to affect any traditional um, concept that you may have. It's just supposed does to. It alter, does it alter from the Hebrew Bible? No, I'm. About, we're about to read it. Ver, we're about to read it together. We got. We got to discuss. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what I think about it. I'm just saying that we talk. Okay. Well, all I'm saying is is that the relationship between Jamestown, Virginia, uh -huh. okay, and the KJV. Uh -huh. Is the is the man named James? Agreed. And he is a king. Agreed. And this is his domain. Agreed. Okay, so that's all I'm saying. So when so because the 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 because we're talking about money, and we're talking about a kingdom, and a parable that describes our time and our age. So it's, it says, all right, so it says, in, uh, and that was a good question. I'm not, I'm not knocking you at all. I mean, I, you know, of course I like that kind of stuff, but the, uh, you know, I just wanted to make sure because the way you were describing it, I had to make sure where you were going so I can. All know. right. So when we read, when we read these book, these stories, it's supposed to be relevant to our time. It's supposed to be relevant to us in this day and age. Yeah. Okay. So when I read, when I'm reading the stories I'm I'm thinking about like okay how does this apply in my generation and to me so that's where we started we started out you know the parable it, it pretty much ends. you ought to have put my money with the bankers so that when I came 
you could have gave me my money back with interest. So he's giving this game on, on how are we supposed to be operating and thinking in the kingdom from either a master's perspective or the slave perspective. It's up to you which which the person want to take from it. What do you want to do? You want to be a hustler? Or do you want to get hustled? That's what it is. But he going to tell you. He going to tell you that the the people who are able to make profit, they going to inherit the the joys of the Lord, meaning like Miami, the yachts, uh the nice living, the tropical, the tr the trips overseas, the um you justify it. <laughs> no, I'm just saying that that you get to enjoy the, the the joys of the Lord. If you got, if you make money, make money. But if you got to use your time to make the money, like that means, how are you gonna go somewhere if you got if you can't go because you got to make the money? Because if you don't go to work, you don't get to rent, or you don't have a car because you got car payments. You see what I'm saying? The the point I'm trying to make is it's a matter of. It, that's what they're trying to give us is the frame, the mind frame that we're supposed to have in the kingdom. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? I'm gonna, I'm gonna bookmark this, and this is gonna be the first thing I, I ever read to my son from the Bible. <laughs> <laughs> well, I swear to God, bookmark Rondell. You are gonna be. I'm gonna be like this is the story that Rondell gave to me. I wouldn't have came across this passage if it wasn't for him. <laughs> Thank y'all, Uncle. We bring some hustlers. We is not no fucking work. Well, hey, well, yeah, that's that's what it is. I mean, it's just it is. I mean, well, this this this. All right, so you you with me, right? You on on the fourteen? Okay. So it all right. So it says, for the kingdom of heaven is like a man traveling to a far country. All right, who called on his own servants. And delivered his goods to them. And to one he gave five talents, to another two, and to another one, to each according to his own ability. And immediately he went on a journey. Then he who had received five the five talents went and traded them with them and made another five talents. And likewise. He who had received two gained two more also. So trade and gain are both used in that. But he who had received one went and dug in the ground and hid his Lord's money. Lord meaning master. And notice that that Lord's is, is lowercase. It says his Lord, meaning that in this kingdom, there will be slaves and masters. Yeah. After, um, in 19, it says, after a long time, the Lord of those servants came and settled accounts with them. So he who had received five talent came and brought five other talents saying, Lord, you delivered to me five talents. Where's the account part? I'm following with you, I don't see Okay, um, it says, uh, that's, that's, you read it, uh, 25 verse 19, to see what your Bible uh, says. I wasn't, verse I wasn't, uh, I wasn't, I wasn't at, uh, 25, 19, I'm at, uh, 19. After a long time, the Lord of those servants cometh and reckoneth with him. Okay, so that's, that's the word they use for yours. Mine say settled accounts. But reckon means the same thing. It means to come and he, he came to get his money. Okay. He came back to come get his, his money back, basically. All right. So he had, so okay, 20. So he who had received five talents came and brought five other talents, saying, Lord, you delivered to me five talents. Look, I have gained five more talents besides them. His Lord said to him, Well done, good and faithful servant. You are faithful over a few things. I will make you a ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of your Lord. So on 22, he said, uh, He also had, he also who had received two talents came and said, Lord, you delivered to me two talents. 
Look, I have gained two more talents beside them. His Lord said to him, Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over a few things. I will make you ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of your Lord. So the point is they both doubled their money and they both got the same thing. So it doesn't matter if you did five or two, you doubled the money that your that your employer gave you or whatever, he gonna be happy. You know what I'm saying? If, if you if you send me if you if you send me out and I come back and I doubled your money, you're gonna be happy, right? So it says enter the joy, but it says on 23, which is an odd number. His Lord said to him, well done, good and faithful servant. All right. Um, you have been faithful over a few things. I will make you a ruler over many things. Enter the joy of the Lord. So that's another point right there is faithful over a few things. And I will make you a ruler over many things. And what that mean is, okay, if you good with $25, you're faithful. You got faith and you, you invest this $25. Because you were faithful with it, you had you had faith to multiply that. Now you can have the joys of the Lord, right? So be faithful with a little, and then you'll receive more, many things. All right. So um, then it says, then he who had received the one talent came and said, Lord, I knew you to be a hard man, reaping where you have not sowed and gathering where you have not scattered seed. And I was afraid and went and hid your talent in the ground. Look, there you have what is yours. But his Lord answered and said to him, you wicked and lazy servant. You knew that I reap where I have not sown and gathered where I have not yet scattered seed Therefore, you ought to have deposited my money with the bankers, and at my coming, I would have received back my own with interest. Therefore, take the talents. Take therefore the talent from him and give it unto him which hath ten talents. Yes. For everyone, for to everyone who has more, will be given, and he who have abundance. And he will have abundance, but from him who does not have, even what he has will be taken away. And cast, which is like a spell, the unprofitable servant, the unprofitable servant, into the utter darkness, there will be weeping and grasping yes. of teeth. Right? And then it goes into the, the last parable. We, we're not going to do that, but he divides the sheep and the goat like we're doing right now. The vax and the unvax, the right, the right and the left, you know, the um, Democrats and Republicans. Right. So if you notice everything that we're living in right now, this is the unveiling, the revelation. This is 20. The Bible ends in the 22 chapters of Revelation. This is the 22 chapter, 22nd chapter. And it's talking about your people. I bet you that'll blow your mind. Hey, go to Revelations 22 real quick. I'm going to show you your, your people. Revelations. 